call your attention to Matthew chapter 15 and verse number 8. Bible says, this people <laughs> draweth nigh unto me with their mouth. and honoreth me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. We give honor to God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary for all of our sins. Thank God that he hung, he bled, he died. But on the third day, third day, he got up from the grave. That's the gospel, and that's good news. Amen. Yeah, give that a hand clap. I'm like you. I'm glad he got up. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We want to use as a subject title this morning, fake worship versus heart worship. Amen. So much fake news going around, amen. <laughs> fake, fake worship <laughs> versus heart worship, amen. One half of the book of Matthews are the chapters of Matthew speak about the last year of Jesus' ministry. At this time, Jesus has become so popular with the people until he poses a threat to the local Pharisees and scribes in Galilee. Hallelujah. People are being healed in great numbers. Miracles are taking place everywhere. So much so that the Pharisees and scribes feel threatened. So they send to Jerusalem to get some backup. To get some heavyweights to help them deal with this Jesus. This Jesus has gotten out of hand. <laughs> look like everybody going after him. Amen. So if you look with me in Matthew chapter 15 and tell your neighbor, neighbor, I think we're out to storm. Amen. <laughs> in Matthew chapter 15, it says, it's in there. verse number one, it says, then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem. All right, so I said, Jerusalem, you got it. Saying, amen. And, and, uh, and I got to put a pen right there. And, and mind you, Jerusalem was the location of the great schools. Hallelujah, amen where they worshiped at the temple in Jerusalem. As a matter of fact, the most eminent men and scholars gathered in Jerusalem. These men had superior knowledge and greater prestige than the scribes and Pharisees in Galilee. It is more than likely this committee represented leaders of the Sanhedrin Council. And, and uh, Sanhedrin Council would be like our Supreme Court, amen, in Jerusalem. These men carried great ecclesiastical weight, amen. And, and they are referred to in our day as the heavyweights. Amen. Amen. Uh, some of y'all, uh, if I can put it a little plainer, the big shots. Amen. They, they had come to town. Amen. 
to see this Jesus. Amen. Therefore, these persons were regarded with great reverence by the people of Galilee and, and especially by the Pharisees and, and scribes. Uh, they regarded them with utmost esteem. And because they had so much knowledge, Jesus handles them with great severity. At this point, Jesus goes on the offensive. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He, he's not going to be nice to them. Amen. Because to whom much is given. Amen. <laughs> much is required. Amen. He was easy on the local boys. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But these, he's not going to be easy on. Amen. In Matthew chapter 15 and verse number 2, the, the Bible says uh, they, they, they came in on him. This, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Hallelujah. <laughs> no matter how difficult or how obscure or, or how mysterious this passage may seem or even how trivial it may seem in our day, it is one of the most important passages in the whole gospel story. So we need to take our pens out and pay close attention to what's going on right here. The passage represents a clash between Jesus and the leaders of Orthodox Jewish religion. Between Jesus and the Orthodox teaching of Judaism. The scribes and the Pharisees had come all the way down from Jerusalem to Galilee to put this question to Jesus. And watch it now. The questions are not malicious. The questions are not meant to entangle Jesus at this point. Amen. They are genuinely bewildered and they go from being shocked to being outraged. And hear me now. Why this passage is so, so important. This is not a personal clash between Jesus and the Pharisees. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, it's more than that. Amen. It is a clash or a collision of two views of religion. Two views of the demands of God. Two different perspectives. One is talking or coming from the point of view of the inward, and the other one's coming from the point of view of the outward. Watch it now. There is no compromise between the two views. There's no working an agreement between the two views. One had to be destroyed. In this passage, we see one of the supreme religious contests in history. The religious leaders accuse Jesus' disciples they say they wash not their hands when they eat bread. 
Now, let me make this clear to y'all. Hallelujah. This has nothing to do with physical cleanness. It is a ceremonial matter. This matter deals with religious purification. For a man to be clean so that he's able to worship God. So that he is able to approach God. If you were clean, then you were able to approach God. If you were clean, you were able to worship God. Now, if you were unclean, it was impossible to approach God. Come on with me now. Glad you're listening. If you were unclean, you were unable to worship God because God is holy. Tell about three neighbors, God is holy. <clears throat> so in the religious system of things, certain things made you unclean. Uh, such as if you touched a dead body, you were unclean and you had to get cleaned up. Amen. If you touched a Gentile, y'all don't know what a Gentile is. If you weren't a Jew, then you were a Gentile. So if you touched a Gentile, you were unclean. And if anybody touched you, then you were un they were unclean. Yeah, it, it was infectious, amen. Let me go a little deeper. If you ate certain things, certain type of foods, and they had a list of unclean food, and, and if, you, if you ate those things, you were unclean. Certain animals were considered unclean. And, and if a woman had a child, amen, then for a certain period of time, she was unclean. And, and, and there were Gentiles in, in, in Palestine. So, so when they walked on the dust, and, and if you walked on top of the dust that they walked on top of, then you were unclean. Amen, amen. And you weren't fit for worship, amen. And you had to clean up and get clean. Amen. And uh, they knew that Jesus' disciples and Jesus had been out there with all these publicans and all these sinners. So they knew that they were unclean. Hallelujah. And if a person does become unclean because of contact with certain things then they must go through an elaborate necessary ritual cleaning amen and, and this wasn't a regular washing of the hands this was a ritualistic washing of the hands the hands had to be held up in a certain position amen and the water had to run down a certain way, amen. And the water couldn't go back up in any place because the water was unclean, amen. And the water had to fall off into a bucket somewhere, amen. But all of this was outward. This all was formal. This all was ritualistic. These complicated washing systems came to be adopted by the strictest of orthodox Jews and to these scribes and Pharisees this was a matter of life and death hallelujah to your neighbor neighbor to them it was a matter of life and death 
this, let me break it down. This was a matter of if you could worship God or if you could go into the temple. If you weren't clean, you couldn't go into the temple. And, and you couldn't go in the presence of God. And you couldn't approach God. Amen. This was ceremonial. This was external. This was an outward. This was an outward worship. And it was of the utmost importance importance to them and this was a life and death matter it was dependent upon the outward somebody say outward <laughs> tell your neighbor the outside oh help me say the outside look good well instead of Jesus answering their question Jesus goes on the attack. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. To neighbor, neighbor. Jesus goes on the offensive. Jesus begins by accusing them. Amen. <laughs> These are the big boys, so you can take it. Amen. Matthew chapter 15 and verse number three. Amen. The Bible says, but he answered and said to them, why do ye also transgress the commandments of God <laughs> by your tradition? Amen. Somebody shout your tradition. Amen. Come on, let's go there. Amen. <laughs> tradition is something that is external, whereas God's truth is something that is internal in the heart. Amen. These traditions came from man, but God's word came from God. Somebody help me this morning. The problem was, hallelujah, there's, there's nothing actually wrong with tradition, but when you put tradition above the scriptures and above the word of God, Y'all better help me this morning. Then you're going to have a few problems. Amen. They were putting their traditions, their, their man-made tradition, their, their human traditions, they were putting it above the word of God. And then they got themselves in trouble with Jesus. Somebody help me this morning. <laughs> Yeah, but I got to go a little history here. Amen. There is a history to all of this. When the Jews were in captivity in Babylon back in 586 B.C. called the exile, the scribes began to write their comments on the word of God. Their comments on the scriptures and on passages that they did not understand. And gradually these comments became larger and larger until there was more interpretation than there was scripture. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. And here's where the dangers came in. Here's where the danger came in. After a while, men were more familiar with the tradition than they were with the scripture. Y'all better help me somehow. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And finally, by Jesus' day, when he comes along, the tradition of the elders had supplanted the scriptures had replaced the word of God as the supreme authority. It was a greater offense to transgress the teaching of some great rabbi than to transgress the word of God. And Jesus is bringing this to the point right here. This is what Jesus was attacking and and he's attacking it hard and, and he's going to attack it from now until they put him on the cross 
yeah they're not gonna put up with this yeah they're gonna put him on the cross and and he will attack it to the very end and and matter of fact folks he was nice to the local boys because they didn't know too much amen but the big boys came and they knew a whole lot amen so he's not gonna be nice to them it's only gonna get worse and the heat's gonna be on and and they gonna clash and and he's not gonna pull no punches and and it ain't gonna be no light nice language here we're gonna enter the battleground and and this becomes a battleground tradition versus scripture the outward view versus the inner view ceremonialism or oh, help me holy ghost ceremonialism versus heart worship can i break it down this morning fake worship versus true worship hallelujah <laughs> And, and, and if the truth be told, and the Lord just ministered to me, the battle right here is a battle between Satan and God. Right there on the battlefield. They're battling out right there. Uh, reality versus that which it looks like. Amen. Matthew chapter 15 and verses 4 through 6. The Bible says, for God commanded saying, and I notice now, God commanded yeah. saying, honor thy father and mother. And he that curses father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Well, what in the world is he talking about, amen? And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandments of God of none effect by your word, by your tradition. Well, let me break that down, because in our culture, that might not mean too much, but let me go down to their culture. Jesus goes on the attack, the offensive. It was that they were breaking God's law by practicing their tradition. And Jesus gives an illustration. They practice Corban. You say, what in the world is Corban? Uh, so to go to Mark chapter 7, verses 11 and 12. Amen. The Bible says, But you say that if a man says to his father or mother, whatever help you might otherwise have received from me is Corban. That is a gift devoted to God. Then you no longer let him do anything for his father or mother. Well, still, what are you talking about? Corbin in Hebrew means a gift. If the Jews wanted to escape some financial responsibilities, he could declare that his good, his properties, his belongings were Corban, which means they belong to God. And he's given it to God as a gift. And he's dedicated to God as a gift. This meant if he didn't want to take care of his parents and he didn't feel like being bothered with them and he really wanted to keep it for himself, he just declared it was Corban, that it was a gift dedicated to God. Therefore, mama and daddy could not touch it or get a hold of it 
because it belonged to God. Well, what was this? This was a clever way of getting out your responsibility because the tradition could cover you. But what they were doing was losing the power of God in their own lives by being disobedient to the word of God. They were hurting their character by being disobedient to the word of God. They were missing out on God's blessings because they were being disobedient to the word of God. Tradition gave them a loophole from doing the word of God. What is coming down to whom shall you obey? Who's in authority? Who's in the right right here? Uh, Satan and God are battling right here. External, externality says uh, if everything looks all right on the outside, it's okay. But Jesus said it doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside. I'm concerned about what's going on. Y'all don't hear me this morning. What's going on on the inside? You can look good on the outside and have the wrong motive, the wrong desire, the wrong heart, the wrong attitude, but everything looks okay. We got to put this man on the cross. <laughs> He's causing too many problems for us. The whole religious system is hanging on this and, and one view got to stand and the other view got to go, amen. Am I right about it? Hallelujah, yeah, a whole lot is in this passage here. You can look right on the outside and be wrong on the inside. Hallelujah. God is concerned about the inside. And Jesus makes it clear as he goes on the attack that your tradition made it possible for men to disobey the word of God. This was a confrontation. This was a clap. This was a clash. This was a conflict tradition versus the word of God can I go there outward religion versus an inward relationship can I go there going through the ritual but your heart is not in it somebody talk to me this morning people obey tradition because they want to please men and gain some status people obey the word of God because they want to please God there's a war going on in chapter 15 you on a rough battleground two views of religion right there on the battleground and a war is going on and folks don't know what's going on but, but God and Satan are, are clashing right here over worship service and how you should worship false worship or real worship fake worship or heart worship tell your neighbor neighbor oh neighbor the gloves are being taken off and amen amen Jesus is not backing up one bit and he's not giving no flowery language and he was nice on the local boys because they didn't know anything they, they didn't know anything but these guys know something and, and they know what they're arguing about one view gotta stand and somebody gotta go somebody got to go and they put it right where it is. Yeah. The clean and unclean system. Yeah. The approach to God yeah. is right here. Uh -huh. and if you abolish our system, we all wiped out. So when they leave there, you got to go to the cross. Yeah. You got to go. Yeah. 
hearts. They knew what they were arguing about. So, neighbor, chapter 15 is a worse storm, amen. <laughs> the gloves are off. The big boys <laughs> are being confronted. <laughs> Our Savior, our Lord, our King of Kings, our Master of everything, Jesus doesn't disguise his feelings about how he feels about them, to whom much is given, much is required. Jesus tells them openly just how he feels about them. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus said some things I couldn't imagine myself saying. Amen. But I feel sometimes. But I just wouldn't say what he said. But he just says it just like it is. Can I back it up? Can I back it up? He tells them how he feels about them and all their knowledge. Matthew chapter 7. Excuse me, Matthew chapter 15, verse 7. The Bible says ye hypocrites <laughs> I don't know about y'all but I think that's some strong language right there <laughs> I, I can't see myself calling somebody that but I would thank it amen <laughs> <laughs> did I say that amen hit me good amen hit me one more time thank you baby amen correct myself this morning amen <laughs> forgive me lord amen <laughs> He's telling, he's telling the big boys, ye hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh. What does nigh mean? Near. This people draweth near unto me with their mouths. And honors me with their lips, but their heart. I'm talking about a heart religion. Yeah, we 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 on the battlefield now, but their heart is far from me. Hypocritical worship, going through the motions. But your heart is somewhere else. Hypocritical worship. Your body is in the temple. But your mind is somewhere else. Hypocritical worship. Everything looks good on the outside. Y'all don't hear me this morning. But the inside is not right with me. Hypocritical worship, a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Hypocritical worship, pretending like you're enjoying the law, but the heart is somewhere else. Hallelujah. This, this is a, a real battleground between God and Satan. Real worship and fake worship and God wants the heart and God is after the heart and, and Satan says as long as you go through the form and, and the fashion and, and the ceremony and the ritual and, and all the other trappings you can leave the heart at home Tell your neighbor, neighbor, oh neighbor, God wants your whole heart. He wants a heart worship and, and not a hypocritical worship. He wants a heartfelt praise and he wants a heartfelt worship and heartfelt love and heartfelt amen and heartfelt clapping and heartfelt praise and heartfelt thanksgiving. Whatever you do, do it with your heart. Let me land the plane and 
this is just the first half of the fight, amen. <laughs> well, Matthew chapter 15, the verse number 9, amen. Hallelujah. Getting ready to land the plane. But in vain, they do worship me. Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of what? Of men. Matthew 15, 99 in the NIV. What does that say? You got that one? It says, amen. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by what? Men. Tradition deals with form. God deals with the heart. God's word penetrates the heart. God's word changes the heart. God wants us to change our heart. God wants us to worship from our heart. Jesus is concerned about our heart. Jesus is concerned about true worship. Honor God with your heart. Worship God with your heart. Do everything you do, do it with your heart. Today we're neighbor. Oh, neighbor. God wants your heart. Come on, give God a hand of praise with me. Amen. Now stand on your feet. We want to end with these scriptures together. And we're going to... Did we, did we type the scriptures out, Sister Stenson? Whoa. <laughs> you bad. Amen. Jeff's jealous. <laughs> he said, I'm better. Watch me, Pastor. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Somebody said, with your heart. With your heart. That's what the battle is about. Brother Chris, this is some kind of battle. Some kind of critical, critical scripture. That 15 is the turning point. From this point on, he's no longer passive. He's no longer defensive. He knows this is the last year. I'm on my way to the cross. But before I go, Delvin Brown, I got to leave some teaching for Victor Viv. So you can know that you know that you know what the battle was all about. And then once you get it on inside, you take it out everywhere. It's about that heart. See, Satan let you get away with just coming pretending. Got your body in church, but your mind somewhere else. God wants that heart. He's after your heart. Well, some of y'all married, y'all, y'all know y'all want the heart. You don't have the heart, you ain't got nothing. Am I right about it? Okay, knows the heart. Let's roll, sister. Okay, no more, let's read together. We believe in our hearts. Rome. Okay, read this. If thou the Lord Jesus, and shall be thine Amen. Number two. Remember, before you read, every place you see heart, I want y'all to shout that a little bit louder, okay? Because we're done with the heart. Number two, let's read. We love from the heart. Come on. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Number three, what does it say? We sing from the heart. Listen, what does that say? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns 
and spiritual song. Sing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Come on, somebody. Number four, we obey the Lord from our hearts. Come on. Not with eye service as men please, but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give from the heart. Come on, somebody. Every man according as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or necessity. For God loves us a what? Cheerful giver. Come on, somebody. Next one. Six. God wants us to be connected in our hearts. <laughs> Create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Hallelujah. One more. In true worship and not fake worship, we lift up our hands to God. All right. Let us lift up our hearts with our hands unto God in the heavens. Was it was the last thing I have? Let's give God a heartfelt praise. Let everything, Let everything that has breath praise, praise the Lord. Praise, praise ye the Lord. Lord. Give God a hand clap from the heart. Somebody shout from the heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.